Over the course of his life, the Apostle Paul gave many instructions. And the last instructions that he ever gave at the end of his life were his words to Timothy at the end of the second epistle to Timothy, come before winter. Second Timothy is usually regarded as Paul's farewell letter because it was written from prison as he anticipated being executed for preaching the gospel. Now, why did he ask Timothy to come before winter? Well, it's pretty plain. Paul believed that he would be dead by winter, and he wanted to see Timothy one last time. Now, these words, come before winter, have come to symbolize, in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., the urgency of now, the need to do what needs to be done in the present time, knowing there's no guarantee for tomorrow. And we know the wisdom of that, yet all of us struggle with procrastination, putting off things that need to be done today till tomorrow, not knowing that we'll even have tomorrow. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. And why do we do that? That's what I want us to think about in chapel today. The first reason we procrastinate is because we get a mindset of doing only what has to be done. Now here's the problem with that. When you're only doing what has to be done, when you're waiting for the deadline, when you don't study until the night before the test, or you don't write the paper until the night before it's due, you're only doing the minimum in life. You're doing only the bare minimum of what is expected of you. And what that leads to is a life that's just controlled by others, only doing the things that have to be done, doing what is demanded of you and then no more. You're, no, you're not in control of your own life. You're letting others lead you around. You're not doing what you desire and what you plan for yourself. And the Bible presents a life for us that is very different from that, one that's driven by grace and one that's driven by passion and desire. Jesus came to give us an abundant life, not a life filled with tasks that we have to do by tomorrow. The second reason we procrastinate is because we're just simply overwhelmed. What needs to be done just seems so big, so beyond our ability to do it, that we'd just rather not think about doing it until it just has to be done. There's a simple solution for that. If you're overwhelmed by a big project that you have to do, just split it into small tasks. Every big project is made up of small steps. Identify the small steps. Figure out what the next thing that needs to be done is and tackle that without thinking about the whole big project. It's much easier to think of things in small steps. So don't get overwhelmed. It doesn't, you don't have to be overwhelmed. Thirdly, we procrastinate just out of habit. We get into a rut. Somebody has said that anybody that brags about what he's going to do tomorrow probably did the same thing yesterday. You get into a cycle of procrastination where it becomes just a part of your process and habits are hard to break, but they can be broken with determination and effort, you can become a person who gets ahead of schedule. You can become somebody who does what needs to be done now and recognizes the urgency of now. Finally, we procrastinate simply because we're fooled into thinking that there's always more time. The fact is, we're not guaranteed more time. We never know when our last day may be which is what Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. And also, James says this in James chapter 4 verse 13. He says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say this, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance and all such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. That last verse could read this way, whoever knows the right thing to do now and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. Procrastination is sinful. And we don't need to get into this habit of counting on time that the Lord simply hasn't promised us. If there's something that needs to be done, we should do it. So let me give you a little suggestion on how to overcome procrastination 
and get things done. First of all, just brainstorm all the things that you need to do, all the things that you want to do. Get them all on a sheet of paper or write them on a marker board or put them on your iPad or whatever you use. Get it all out there where you can see everything. Empty your head of all the big projects and things you want to do. No matter how big it is, no matter how scary it is, get it out there where you can look at it. And you'll find that it's not as much as it seems when it's stuck in your head. The second step is break all of those big projects down into individual steps, manageable tasks that you can do one at a time. Now, after you've done that, make a list and put the list in order of importance according to your value system. In other words, if there are things related to what you need to do for God, those should go at the top of the list. And then the next thing is simple. You just simply tackle the first thing on the list and work on that until you get it done. And if you get it done and you still have time in your day and you still have energy, tackle the second thing on the list, then the third. And when you run out of time or you run out of energy, stop. And if the Lord blesses you with another day, then you get your list out the next day and you tackle the next thing on the list. If you do this periodically throughout your life, simply organizing all the tasks that are in your head on paper, making lists, putting them in order according to your values, you can overcome procrastination and live the way the Lord wants you to uh, by a life driven by grace and desire instead of just tasks that you have to do. God wants you to have an abundant life. He wants you to do things now to recognize the urgency of now. Go out there today and tackle the first big thing that needs to be done. Don't procrastinate. You don't know if you'll have another day.